Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. My name is Chris Legaspi, and today we are doing another live stream from our Discord community. Today's topic will be the value analysis, value techniques, value breakdown of the great master Bugaro. We're going to look at figures today. And um, we're going to look at how William Bouguereau uses value and value control in his figures. We're going to start by going over some of the overall value structure in the compositional sense. And then we're going to, if we have time, we'll look at one in detail to really examine it. If you'd like to join us in our brand new Discord, we have a lot of hardworking and talented artists there. Our Discord community is private right now, so I'm going to keep it that way. We want to make sure we only get the hardworking, positive folks here. So all you have to do to join our Discord is to sign up for my insider's email list, and that is totally free. And these lessons and weekly live streams are free. So to take part and join our community, go to drawwithchris.com. There you can just enter your email. And as soon as you um, enter your email, you will get the Discord link and links to uh, any live classes. If you're watching live or if you are watching on replay, comment below. Where are you located? What time is it for you? I'm currently in Thailand at the moment and it's nine in the morning for me. So thank you for being here wherever you are. And what I'm going to do now is we're going to go through some examples of our friend Bouguereau here. Bouguereau is one of the greatest realists, masters in history, arguably. Famous for his uh, exquisite, well, he does everything well, figures, academic realism. If you look in the stream room chat, I'm going to go through a couple of examples. We're going to start with some overall compositional analysis. Let's look at this one. I love this one. So um, I got a uh, beautiful tone paper book here. It's wonderful. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. So I just start with a little frame, you know. What I'm doing now is I'm trying to match the aspect ratio, and then I'm going to go ahead and get an overall sense for what's happening here. Now, if you look at the image, let's take a moment and squint at the image. By squinting, I mean just kind of squint at it, and when you squint, you'll be able to see more of the value structure. So what do you guys see right now? If you're watching on live on replay, comment below. What is the darkest thing? in this painting and what is the lightest thing so that's the first thing i look for what is the darkest thing what is the lightest thing if you answered the fabric you would be correct for the darkest thing, for the lightest thing, if you answered the sky, you would be correct. So we know we have a dark thing in front of a light thing, so that's the first thing to consider, is what is the overall value structure. And generally they fall into two categories. Something dark against a light background or something light against a dark background. So this would be the latter or is it the former? Now, we know what the darkest thing is. We know what the lightest thing is. What is the midtone? Where are the midtones? What is the midtone thing? Comment below. What do you guys think is the midtone thing? The thing that's neither dark or light. It's in between. It's the midtone. If you answered the figure, again, you would be correct. That is the beautiful value structure laid out by Mr. Bouguereau here. Absolute simplicity. This is just really what astonishes me. Every time I do these, you know, I've been doing these for years. I always say, um, 
you know, I come from a small town in America. I grew up in America, but I come from a small town. There was no art jobs in my town. There was only swamps and alligators, really. <laughs> so um, when I moved to Hollywood, you know, I wanted to break into movies and video games. But, um, you know, my portfolio wasn't that great. It was okay. And one of the things that um, I did to get better was I did these tonal composition things. I mean, I literally did at least two a day for two years, every day for two years. And uh, I'm still doing them. You know, that was, that was a long time ago, <laughs> that period. So I'm still doing them. It astounds me how um, every time I do these, I can see the value structure, meaning just the simplicity of what they do is, is very simple. Three values, three distinct shapes, three distinct quadrants, three distinct things, and assign three values to them. And then, and then that's really, uh, and then make the shape interesting. Obviously, you have to design the shape and you have to be able to draw figures and things. So um, that helps, but the value structure is what holds the picture together or one of the things, you know. If you have good value structure, but your figure is, is ugly, that's, that's not good either. <laughs> but, you know, if you draw an exquisite figure, but your composition is terrible, that's also not very good either. <laughs> so we, 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 gotta, we got to, uh, you know, meet somewhere in the middle. So I'm just trying to be um, as accurate with the shapes as I can. I don't always succeed, but as long as the um, the frame and the placement and the size of things is is close, it usually works out. And notice I'm not doing too much detail. I'm drawing very abstract and graphic, which is exactly what Bouguereau did. If you look at Bouguereau at face value, right? If you just look at his work, his general body of work, your first impression would be, this guy does exquisite detail, right? He's a master of anatomy, detail, lighting. You can even draw architecture and rocks and waves, right? His detail is world class. It's historic class, right? Which, which it is. More important than his world class details is his world class abstract design. Look at this thing. This is an absolute simple and beautiful design. Look at the Balance of straight with curve, curve, curve with a little straight, dark against light. So anyway, so I got my thing. Let me um, put something underneath. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to purposely use a big old marker. You see that? That way it'll force me not to draw details. So when you're doing this at home, this is exactly the size that I recommend. And exactly the, um, the tools I recommend. So I recently watched this little mini Bouguereau documentary, so I was very inspired by him. I had him on my desktop for a while. The older I get, the more I appreciate him. Okay, this is not comfortable. <laughs> Sorry, I gotta move my. It's gonna fill the water. That's right, the water is a dark shape, so I'm gonna group it as a dark. So that's the. The important thing to get from this exercise is to understand that, yes, there are gorgeous details, but the gorgeous details are 
secondary to the gorgeous value shapes. In my opinion, they're, they're just as beautiful and they're just as important. All right, so we got, we got our two value system, right? I always talk about this. This is what I mean. Two values. We got the light. Well, it's mid-tone. It's the paper right now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some gradients to the figure here. I'm not adding detail. I'm just adding a little bit of darker mid-tone gradient. Just so that the figure clearly reads as mid-tone. And then I'm going to use probably use a white pencil. Now, where else do you guys see mid-tone? Comment below, where else do you see mid-tone? Obviously the figure. If you answered the sky, you would be correct. There's a sky at the bottom. Now the sky is very, very bright actually, but there's a little bit of mid-tone. So I'm gonna put it as a gradient, right? That's another thing that these will teach you. These will teach you that gradients are everywhere and they are a quite a useful tool for adding realism. If you want realism, you have to uh, be good at gradients. All right, and this is my favorite part, why I love this paper. And now I'm going to add the white. We got light. We got a mid-tone here, and the mid-tone has a gradation from, it's too dark. Now we're going to add the light, and we know that the light is the background. Uh, let's see, I'm just going to add my white pencil. Oh, this is so much fun. Brings back memories. I haven't done this in a while. So, um, when I was uh, trying to learn how to, you know, work in my portfolio and learn the realism stuff, when I was doing these, I started to see uh, a pattern. I was like, oh, all of these famous realist guys, Rembrandt, Bouguereau, Caravaggio, Sargent, Sorn, Rubens, Velasquez, even the the American illustrator ones, Lion Decker, Rockwell, they all kind of do the same thing. That's what I started to notice. They all kind of do the same, I don't want to say trick, but they do the same thing over and over and over and over again which is three values, generally three shapes, figure, shadow, and background, or some combination of that. In this case, it's figure, fabric, dark background, sky. So it's figure, dark thing, and background. Kind of do the same pattern over and over again. So that looks, that looks pretty good. It's... Um, It's okay. It's okay. It's not, they don't have to be super accurate. That's not the point here. All right. So let's do one more. Someone made a comment about the moon. That's right. It's actually a, right here. This zone is the brightest zone. The moon is not that bright, but it looks bright because it's, um, it's in a field of midtone or light light. So this is light. This is lightest light. So we have that kind of thing. Light, lightest light, light, half tone, <laughs> darker half tone, lighter. So, anyway. Yeah, that's a good observation. And let's see, this goes here, here, here. Okay, let's do one more. All right, let's do one more together here. Oh, if you're watching live, you should be able to 
grab this reference here, this uh, painting by Bouguereau. So again, try to match the aspect ratio first. This is a long one. It's longer than the other one. I'm so happy I have uh, this uh, sketchbook. I had to mail order this, and the shipping was very expensive. Very expensive. I had to pay uh, around over $200 for shipping some art supplies to Asia. But it was worth it, I think. Okay, so my drawing is a little off. I gotta move the whole thing. <laughs> That's what I like about these uh, little thumbnails, is, uh, you know, you don't have to spend. 16 hours drawing the figure, you can just do a quick sketch of the shape and then uh, start analyzing. Sorry, I got a lot of glare. It doesn't have to be perfect figure, but the general shape and proportion and placement, it needs to be in the right place relative to the little canvas you drew. So that's uh, the main thing I'm doing here, making sure everything is placed correctly. Placement is first. All right, my placement is good. I'm going to put in some ink now. Yes, when I um, this paper has just such a wonderful tone. It's not too dark. It's not too bright. And wonderful texture. I just love the texture. All right, so got my shape here. I'm going to try to uh,
Okay. Our hair. Look at this exquisite hand. Can you guys see the hand in the original? Jesus. Unbelievable. I saw some of uh, Bouguereau's uh, sketches before he does a big painting. These paintings are huge, actually. They're quite large. So he does a lot of preparation sketches. Uh, the guy was master technician. Okay. So I got my shapes here. So now let's take a look at, let's analyze what we have here. Comment below, what is the darkest thing? What is the darkest thing in our, in this composition? What is the darkest thing? Well, obviously, it's the dark background behind her and her hair. What is the brightest thing? So this is a little bit tricky. What is the brightest thing? Comment below. The darkest thing is the background. What is the brightest thing? Well, if you answered the figure and the fabric, you would be correct. It's actually the figure, her torso and the top of her thighs. And then the fabric, the whole fabric is actually very bright, but it has a really bright highlight. So probably the brightest thing is the highlight on the fabric. So that is the, the brightest bright highlight. So this is essentially one light shape. Now what is the mid-tone? What's neither? So this is a little bit tricky. Comment below. What is the mid-tone? So the dark is the background. The light is the figure and the fabric. Highlight being the highlight on the fabric. What is the midtone? Well, if you answered the figure in shadow, you would be correct. The figure does have a shadow, and that is right here. Her knee, her arms, her arms are in shadow, her face is in shadow, and there's some gradation on the ground. There's some midtone gradation on the ground. So, um, just wonderful, wonderful use of subtlety here in this case. This one is a little bit less obvious, um, but it's still a very sharp, very simple and graphic thing. So, let's start by dropping in or making dark what needs to be dark. In this case, it's her uh, the background and hair. And if you want to talk about value grouping, her hair... He made a conscious choice, right? He could have he could have made the hair a midtone. Or he could have put a light shape behind her. But he chose, you know what? I'm gonna group her hair with this dark, dark, murky world behind her. So that's value grouping. And this little well, it's not a wristband, it's her hair. So again, I'm, I'm trying to uh, consciously avoid the details, which is tough, you know, when you're doing, um, when you're trying to do a master copy or a tonal study of a gorgeous figure like this, you know, you're, my first instinct is to want to draw detail. Like, oh my God, look at the gorgeous hand, look at the gorgeous form. Look at the gorgeous shadow. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I want to draw it all. Which you can, there's nothing wrong with that. But for these little value studies, little value thumbnails. Okay, there's a gradation here. There's midtone here. And there's midtone here. This rock is dark. I'm going to group this rock with dark and group this rock with dark and then draw the gradation later into the midtone. So there's a lot of busyness happening here. So try your best to treat it as an abstract shape. So really squint and just look for abstract geometric shapes. That's all. 
It's all you want to do at this stage. It's all Bugaro did. He designed it as a series of abstract geometric shapes. And, okay, that looks good. So we got our dark. All right, so now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to punch in the lights. I'm going to punch in the lights so that I know, because I know how dark he went. He went pretty dark right here, right? On a scale of 1 to 10, let's say 10 being pure black, right? He went, he went pretty dark. He went pretty dark, maybe like an 8 or a 9. So here he goes really, really bright too. So I'm going to... I'm going to put the brightest thing, which is the fabric, the highlight on the bright fabric. So this is a, a bright colored fabric that has a highlight. And then her figure. Now you may be wondering, are the highlights, the rim lights on her figure, are those bright? Actually, yes, but they're not as bright as this. So right now we have the brightest bright thing. And then the second brightest thing will be the figure and the highlights on the figure. So these highlights are roughly the same value as her chest. Now you may be wondering, you may look at that and go, that's crazy. They look really bright. Well, of course. Why do these highlights look so bright? Comment below. Does anybody know why these highlights look really, really bright? They may even look brighter than this. That's right, because they're surrounded by darks. So that's an optical illusion. They are bright, but they're not as bright as this. So don't be fooled by that. You got to be very careful with that. And um, so I'm just going to put a, a nice little glaze of light lightening here just to lighten her figure a little bit. Her figure is not super bright compared to the paper, the value of the paper that I'm using. And you see how in the torso, the chest is the brightest part. There's a little brightness on the chest. And then uh, there's a little accent on her hip. And then let's lighten this fabric a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to do the mid-tone, and let's see, so her face is in mid-tone. Arms are in mid-tone. Both arms are in mid-tone. She has a bit of that, remember we talked about frontal lighting a few weeks ago in one of the uh, value videos? She has frontal lighting. There's an overall ambient lighting, and then there's frontal lighting as well. And then this is all... This is all mid-tone down here. There we go. So this one was a little bit tricky because um, the light and the halftone are quite close together. So in this case, there's a bit of sophistication happening here. There's a, a gradient from dark to there. The mid-tone is really close. The mid-tone is really close to light. Mid-tone is much closer to light than closer to dark. It's not, it's not quite in the middle. So that's what makes it 
this one a little bit tricky. This one, yeah, this one's it's tough. It takes a lot of a little bit of practice to get this one. All right, let's look at one more example. All right, we're going to do our a more detailed analysis here. Okay, we have a beautiful figure here, and it's like a figure with some other smaller figures around it. It's quite interesting. Let's see. Uh, so it's a she's a flying or floating in the sky. I'm not sure what's going on here. But let's see if we can break this down in a little bit more detail. This one would be great for figure drawing students too. Gorgeous gesture and a stretch and pinch here. Okay, I may run out of space at the top here. I think, let me see. Okay, and uh, top of the canvas is there, bottom of the canvas is here. She's got some kind of stuff happening here around her feet, more floaty figures. I'm not sure what those are. Okay, so I got my composition here. I'm gonna draw my frame and marker. I love um, Sharpie marker too. I don't know why. When I was a kid, I used to, uh, <laughs> I used to, uh, in my school, they would give you supplies. You know, they would say, okay, go, okay, little Chris, little Johnny, little Jimmy, go into the room and grab your art supplies, grab your writing supplies. You know, most kids would get the pencil and an eraser, I would always try to get the uh, Sharpie marker. <laughs> I don't know why, it's such, a cool, uh, it's such a cool marker and it's very easy to find and cheap. All right, so what I'd like to do is more of a detailed analysis. Uh, so I, I was a little more careful with the figure. Uh, you don't have to be. So we're gonna look at the value structure. So let's, let's look at the value structure. Let's see what values we have. So comment below, what's the darkest thing? What's the lightest thing? Comment below. What is the darkest thing? What is the lightest thing? Okay, if you answered her hair, you would be correct. Also the background around her hair. Although it's purple, it's, it's, it's dark. So she has a bit of a dark glowy gradient around her. Also the... Uh, there's a, a little occlusion shadow in her butt, right, right here, obviously, contact shadow. 
Now, what is the brightest thing? Comment below, what is the brightest thing? Well, if you answered this zone here, her arm, upper back, you would be correct. So that means everything else is midtone, right? So there's actually, there's a light. So I'm going to go ahead and put a light. So the brightest thing is her shoulder. Oops, you probably can't see that. Here, this will make sense. So the brightest thing is her shoulder. Her body is a little bit darker. And then you have the paper. So this zone is lights. The darkest thing is her hair. It doesn't get pure black, but it gets pretty dark. So let's say her hair is here. And then there's gradations. Her hair, the background, the occlusion shadow. So her, the darks are here. And the midtones. Okay, so there are midtones. There's a, quite a range of midtones. So there's dark midtone, and then there's a light midtone. So this is a bit of a four value thing. It's a bit, it's a bit complex. Let me get my colored pencil. Okay, so we're kind of here. Her hair, the background around her hair, the midtones, which are the shadow. Well, the, the dark part of the background. This is the shadow on her body. These two are our midtones, and then um, lights are in this zone. What we're going to do is first, let's. What I always like to do is address what's dark first. Her hair is pretty dark. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna put a there <laughs> little accent in her butt, and her hair is quite dark. Now, of course, there's little nuances in her hair, right? There's little wobbles in hair details, but just for now, let's group that all as, as one dark, and then actually the background is quite dark around her her head, her hair. Okay. And then too dark now. Oh, I kind of regret doing that. <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. Oh, this tone is so ugly. I get sad when I make an ugly tone. And uh, her hair. Now her hair is a gradation. You guys see that? Her hair is dark, really dark here. It's dark here, but not as dark. And how does Bougro solve this problem? With a gradation, of course. That's what all these guys do. And then you add detail on top. That's what all these guys do to make their value shapes look more sophisticated. They just add gradation. So this whole background needs to get darker.
Oh, there's some light shapes here. Uh, can't can't ignore that. There's some little light angels down there, or whatever they are. I think this is a Greek or Roman goddess kind of thing, mythological creature subject. It's not a it's not a Christian angel. I think could be wrong. Does anybody know who this story is? I know Bugrod liked to paint a lot of historical figures, mythologies, and things like that. Okay. All right, I know this part is not that fun to watch, but hopefully you're uh, you're going through this as well. Because so what I really want to do is talk about the figures, but I need to set it up. I need it to be dark so it, we can see what's going on with the figure. Because that's what Bugaro did. He put a light thing in a dark world. Right, he used this simple... Simple, 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 beginning to a composition, light thing against a dark world, or vice versa. So those of you who are um, who are working on your portfolio or illustrative pieces or covers or things like that or paintings, that's uh, one of the things to to problem solve in the beginning and will probably help you with your composition is to to just think like Bugaro is do I want a light figure in a dark world or vice versa? Do I want a dark, mostly dark figure in a light world? All right, so we're pretty close here. I got the gradation. I'm close enough. And notice the gradation, right? It goes from dark. It kind of goes out this way. And then there's another zone here. You guys see that? There's another zone here. So this is, well, these, these are more like abstract cloudy things. But the important thing to note is that the darkest part of the sky is pretty much at the top, close to the face, close to the, the hands, right? The hands are in a lot of ways a secondary focal point when you're doing realism your audience will immediately go to the face and then immediately go to the hands so that's a part of good drawing and good picture making is you got to make sure that your hands are are just as carefully drawn and rendered as the face as the one of the responsibilities of the realist. Make sure that everything is looking good and is in order. So notice the gradation. Now, let's look at the figure. We already established the brightest thing is the figure in light and highlight. So let's do that now. There's a highlight on her shoulder and the scapula. You see that? So this is a great... Those of you who want to learn figure drawing, I would do this. I would master copy this, especially if you want to learn the back. This is an exquisite back. Bugro is clearly a historically world-class figure draftsman. So you can learn a lot about rendering the torso or the upper back, super complex area from this painting. And then the Notice the highlights, they kind of fall and um, they, they move. The highlights, and the highlights are all connected, right? They're not like highlight here, highlight here, highlight here, highlight here, highlight here, right? They don't, they don't, they're not spotty. I see this a lot. If you're one of my students and you hear me say the word spotty, that means this. You're putting like 
stuff all over the place. So the, you want the highlights to have some kind of meaningful connection. And they do that here. If you follow the highlight here, they do connect. They have a meaningful connection. They describe form and they flow down the figure all the way from head to toe. So that's something to do in your own work. Make sure nothing stays in isolation. Everything has a meaningful connection from one form to the other. Okay, so now let's look at our midtones. So we have light and highlight figure. Now let's look at our midtones. So we have we have a shadow. Let's go ahead and it's a clear shadow. It's not it's not a super strong core shadow, but but that's okay. It's very clear. It's very unidirectional. It's all coming from the upper left. So that's great. Face is in shadow, neck. I regret putting that that mark there. It's making the butt look way too contrasty. It's too ugly because it's in it's in a black marker. It's really standing out. So I got to make everything else around it pretty dark. Cast shadow. On her foot, underplane of her foot. The uh, little bit of a form shadow here, a contour shadow on the outside of her leg. And then the underside of her foot is pretty dark and has little dark shapes and contrasty shapes and detail. It's a little messy the way I drew it, but uh, it's okay. And there's little, little angels over here. Do, 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 little angels. Oh, I don't know what they are. The little flying spirits, I guess. It's an interesting composition. So now, let's go into our darker half tone. So we have shadow, which is here. Now let's see what is darker halftone. Well, it's obviously core shadow, occlusion shadow. It's a good place to start. There's, a, there's an occlusion shadow in her butt, obviously. Occlusion shadow is a contact shadow. It's really, really dark. That's where no bounce light can get in, so it gets really dark. Little tiny occlusion shadow shapes in her feet, little tiny dark shapes. Of course, feet and toes. Right here, her hair, uh, her neck, trapezius, neck, some details in her face that I can't get. Um, that's okay. It's not about that, it's about the value. Again, talking about value grouping, notice here, the shadow is pretty dark, but it's like, you know, a warmy gray color. The background is pretty dark, but it's purple. If you examine the values, they're actually the same. This is value grouping. He consciously grouped the shadow of the figure value-wise with the value of the background. Now, color-wise, they, they're different, obviously. But that, that is a conscious choice. He could have pushed this really dark. He could have 
right? This is a this is a nebulous sky. There's no figure here. There's no architecture here. He could have made this zone any value he wanted, but he said, you know what? I'm going to make it just as dark as the shadow. Why do you think he did that? Comment below. Why? Did he group the value of the shadow with the background? Why did he merge, essentially? Comment below. Why do you think he did that right here? He did that there. What do you guys think? I think it's because he probably, at the moment, he probably thought, oh, that looks cool. Or that's, that's a good idea. It, it works. You know, there's probably no real reason for it. But notice here, so shadow on the figure, same value as the background. Now, if you go down just a little bit to the butt and the leg, look what happens there. The butt and shadow, same value pretty much, but look at the background. He says, you know what? In this area, I'm going to make the background slightly brighter. So you see that? You see that here? Value grouping, merging of values. Here, value separation. So that is interesting. I really don't know why he did that. It just, it looks cool, right? We could all agree he looks cool and he clearly knows what he's doing. He's, he's Bouguereau, one of the greatest artists that ever lived, ar arguably. I don't know, but that's something you can do. See that? That is something you can do. On the same figure, you can have one part of it merge with the background and one part of it pop out. So that is pretty cool. Something, something to do. Okay, so we got... We pretty much have the value structure that, that um, is there. I mean, the, obviously, the, it's not perfect and my tones are some of them are pretty ugly and you know there's no there's no detail really but that's okay as a value study we're at a good place now i want to show you everything we talked about up until now we talked about limited values we talked about light against dark or dark against light we talked about gradations right Clearly, gradation in the sky, also in the figure I'll talk about in a minute. And then we talked about box modeling. It's here. Right. This, this is called, um, well, this, this is the back. It's a couple muscles here. So this long piece of back anatomy is a box, right? Well, it's a tube, but... Right, it has a light side and a shadow side. Box modeling, gradation, value shape. And what was the last thing? One, one of the important things we talked about? Comment below. Do you guys know what, what I'm talking about here? If you answered fall off, you would be correct. So, what does fall off say? Fall off states that things, as forms get further away from the light, they get darker and darker. As they get closer to the light, they get brighter and brighter. So, that means that in this figure, does the forms further away from the light, in this case, it's right here, right? We, we agreed that this zone is the brightest thing. And I'm going to make it really bright just so you can see it. We agree that this zone is really, really bright. Oh, it's too bright. Ah, it's a little too bright now. But anyway, I'm just going to go like this. Just going to do a little glowy thing. So, as forms get away from the brightest thing, they should get darker, and they do. Notice the quality of the highlight, right? From here, this is bright. From here to the hip is pretty bright. From the hip to the glute. So, we essentially have three zones of highlight. We have the, the main zone, the upper back, the middle zone, which is the hip, the butt, and the upper thigh, and then the end zone, the last zone, which is the calf 
in the foot. So all we have to do to make a more quote-unquote real or quote-unquote more sophisticated image, sophisticated value composition, value structure in our work is to make sure that we do just like Bouguereau here, is as our highlights go down, they don't get as bright. They, 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 it looks bright, but it's surrounded by dark. And it's probably why he did that. Right, the highlights on the feet, they look they look pretty bright, but they're not. They're just surrounded by dark. So that's another way to make lights pop is obviously surrounded with dark. And as the highlights get closer, they get brighter and brighter and brighter as they get to the full brightness, the brightest zone, which is the upper back. Same with our darks. As the forms get further away, they should get darker and darker. Here, they don't quite, it does, it's very subtle, it's not super obvious. But if you look at, for example, the calf, the calf in the foot, is darker than the butt, for sure darker than the back. And then the hands and the wrist and this forearm is darker than the shoulder, right? It gets darker as it goes here and gets darker as it goes here. So that is something to keep in mind. That's something we can easily see in Bouguereau. So if it's good enough for one of the greatest of all time, it's good enough for us. And let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. And let's see. So, yeah, I think we're at a good uh, stopping point here. I wish I could bring out some of the details in the hair. If, um, you know, if we had more time, I would really zoom in. I would really zoom in and uh, look at more of the subtle nuances, little tiny details and value changes and things that are happening. Because that's, uh, that's the next step. So we, we got the overall impression of what's light, what's dark, what's midtone. We got the larger impression of the major gradients and halftones. And then the second thing would be how he handles uh, details. Maybe we'll save that for another day. But as far as this little study is complete.